Good day, YouTube. This is just a bit of a quick comparison between Linux Mint 21 on the left-hand side here versus Zorin OS 16.1 Core Edition on the right-hand side here. Whoa, wobbly windows. Okay, we'll get into that soon. Now, uh, let's see. So starting off, these are actually both based off Ubuntu, the long-term service release. And uh, so you've, you've got a lot of uh, years of support and updates for these effectively. Now, uh, the, they are actually running off their own default desktop environment. So Linux Mint on the left-hand side here is running on the Cinnamon desktop environment. Whereas, uh, whoa, <laughs> Zorin OS uh, is actually running on its uh, GNOME desktop environment there. So let's have a look at each of these. So they are pretty similar in a way. They're, they're both using this beautifully nice dark mode. Now, uh, both of these operating systems are de designed for, in a way, newcomers to Linux from Windows, particularly Zorin OS. This is really for, for uh, newbies coming from Windows for sure. That's just at least the way they market it there. But this is very similar in terms of the startup menu. You've got your uh, categorization of apps. Uh, your ability to check your... Oh, I actually like how we've got... Uh, let's try that again. The ability to open up your home folder there. That's really cool there. Uh, doesn't quite have that there with Linux Mint, but uh, there is a home folder anyway hiding there. Okay, so, and on the right-hand side, similar thing. You categorization of apps for uh, Zorin OS. Uh, your downloads folders, things like that. Software settings. And both of them allow you to type in something to, to load it up. I particularly love the dark mode. Kind of like a dark and blue mode, uh, synonymous with the color palette that uh, Zorin OS uses here for the, the start menu, so that's nice to see. What we'll do next is uh, jump across to the uh, file manager. Now, whoa, wobbly windows on everything. <laughs> I love it. I love it a bit too much. Now, on the left-hand side, we can see that Linux Mint is using something called the Nemo file manager, a nice sturdy file manager. Right-click, you've got your create options. Uh, you can navigate on the left-hand side there. Almost exactly the same uh, in terms of functionality, at least, for Zorin OS. Whoa, on the right-hand side there. I'm annoying myself saying that, so I'm sure I'm annoying you guys. But I uh, love the dark mode, the customized, the, the blue, uh, I guess, the, the blue accents here alongside the dark mode. It just looks really, really nice. If we right-click here as well, we will see... Oh, we've got uh, the option to do... See, new document. That's good to see. A lot of operating systems, surprisingly, don't have that. Uh, Linux once and you've got a text document I guess option in Linux Mint but you've got all these office options here including the text file so that's really nice to see there nice little touch now this is actually running on the uh, should be the GNOME files uh, file manager there, which is synonymous with any GNOME desktop environment which Zorin OS uses here and uh, next up, what we'll do is go to the uh, the back end and have a little bit of a look here. So we can see that uh, they are actually using the same kernel because they are both based off the, the long-term service release of Ubuntu. So nothing different there. They both have their own software managers as well. So you could uh, just a really easy GUI software manager to load up and uh, yeah, basically download what you want or for what's available there. Just trying to make this one fit in the window. See, I don't have a uh, an expansion option for Linux Mint as I do for Zorin OS. I'm not surprised that Zorin OS is a little bit easier to use. Oh, more wobbly windows. Because it is for, for newcomers to... Oh, that's annoying. Uh, on Linux Mint side. is Yeah, so Zorin OS is designed for newcomers to Windows, like I've said a couple of times there. Uh, now, effectively, they are actually using the same software manager. True story, the one uh, based off Ubuntu. Although, they have their own customized version, I'm look and feel. But uh, you can sort of scroll up and down, and uh, let's see if we can go down. You get your categories of apps. Uh, let's just say we go to games, and you've probably got the exact same games and exact same software options, almost all but guaranteed there. Well, that one seems to be a bit slow to load up, but uh, that is what it is. Uh, we'll close out all of that, and uh, we'll have a look uh, lastly, and do take these values with a bit of a grain of salt. But we're going to have a look at the CPU and RAM usage on boot up for each of these fellas here. So uh, CPU is idle enough for both of them. That's really nice to see there. And let's see, just got a text, sorry about that. Here we go. So uh, Linux Mint using 678 megabytes of RAM on boot up. So not bad, not the greatest, not the worst. And Zorin OS, uh, the GNOME edition, important to note. 795 megabytes of RAM on boot up. That's really good to see. Most GNOME variants, including 
Pop OS, Ubuntu, Fedora, they usually use more, in some cases a lot more, as, as almost as much as double, which is really weird. I'm really impressed with Zorin, what Zorin OS is doing here because it's got this beautifully customized and optimized um, front end of a GNOME desktop environment here. And uh, yeah, no expenses spared on the visuals, however, and no additional RAM expenses is used on the RAM front. Not even 800 megabytes of RAM. Look at that beautiful wobbly windows. Whoa. So I'm very proud of this one. I'm starting to recommend this one to newcomers to Linux, uh, people that want a really secure operating system. You know, you can pop your credit card details into, uh, internet banking, web browsing, emails, the occasional small game, but not too many, to be honest. Um, yeah, YouTube, you name it, just the normal stuff that you would use every day, word processing. Yeah, so really, really good one. Even, in fact, if you're concerned about your parents, uh, your, you know, your older baby boomer parents, for instance, if they're a little bit too old, con concerned about them using a, uh, you know, Windows, and uh, which is really a large attack vector for, for hacking and losing details and all sorts of things, then, yeah, you'd probably recommend Zorin OS because it's just what they're used to, but not so... Uh, yeah, very, very safe, and I'm really proud of this one. You can put it on almost any old machine. There is a lighter version of Zorin OS called Zorin OS Lite that I'd probably even recommend if they've got a very old laptop. Uh, but, you know, even for your partner, someone that's not too tech-savvy, that kind of thing there too. So thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button, and I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.